protection of the way we use it. Yeah? Well, good afternoon, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to Federation Four. I can see a lot of new faces, so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you don't know who I am, I'm David Sarah, and I'm the director of the Fiona and Sydney Meyer Gallery, and I'm also the person who has the pleasure of um, sorting out an art forum for um, for the BCA, and um, really it is my pleasure to welcome you. And before I begin, um, there are a couple of things. Okay, so number one, our two speakers aren't going to be using microphones this afternoon. So if you are in that back section of the auditorium, you may want to come and join us in the front section. They're going to project, but, you know, just full disclosure, come on over. If you want to move, come and move. And even if during the presentation, if you feel the need to move, just move. We care that you're here, okay? And then number two, before I introduce our guest speaker, I do want to take a moment and invite you to acknowledge that long before the VCA was sought of or the University of Melbourne was considered, that the Wunurung and Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation practiced song and dance on this land. They shared stories, they made paintings, they made sculpture, they practiced healing here. And really, we don't take it lightly that we get to do what we do on this land. And it's with great honor and joy that I acknowledge their elders past, present, and those that are yet to come. So our speaker today is Shelley Lassica. Shelley Lassica is based in um, Melbourne and has been working nationally and internationally for over four decades. Hold on just one moment. Almost people who just walked in, the little bit that you missed is that our speakers aren't going to be using microphones. So you might want to come on over, like come on, you know, come into the into the first part. <laughs> well, let me start the intro again. Okay. <laughs> Shelley Lassica is based in Nam, Melbourne and has been working nationally and internationally for over four decades. Her practice has consistently engaged with the context and situations of presenting dance, choreography and performance. Interested in the collective and interdisciplinary possibilities of choreography, she performs her solo and ensemble works in dialogue with designers, writers and visual artists. Shelley's choreographic works have been shown within visual art, theatre, and festival contexts. And these include the Melbourne Festival, the National Gallery of Victoria, Chunky Move, Gertrude Contemporary, Art Space Sydney, uh, the Centre National de la Danse in Paris, Siobhan Davies Studio London, Dance Massive, the Australian Centre for Contemporary Art, Anna Schwartz Gallery, and many, many other contexts. Shelley's performance exhibition, When I Am Not There, recently presented at Monash University Museum of Art. The first exhibition of its kind in Australia was an important opportunity to reflect on 40 years of her choreographic practice. Wherever you are, please make Shelley very, very welcome. Um, I also want to introduce research convener and BCA Jedi, um, Dr. Lisa Radford. And today's presentation is uh, an in conversation between Shelley and Lisa. So please make both of them very, very welcome. Thank you. I guess I'm going to talk like this. I'm going to say thank you, David. And can the people at the back hear us? Okay. So just maybe shout out if we start to like drop our volume levels inadvertently. Um, thanks for that introduction, David. And thanks June for managing the tech at the back. Um, um, I guess we're gonna, uh, David mentioned the 40 year career that, um, of Shelley's um, and in the background, what's going to be playing is a sequence of works that kind of cover some of that 40 years. It starts off with a work behavior in 1995 that was presented at Anna Schwartz Gallery. And then at the, its next iteration in 1996, also at Anna Schwartz Gallery. And then almost 20 years later in um, the program that you coordinate with Zoe Theodore called To Do To Make. And I think that one was at Neon Park. Yeah, well, it was an adjacent, adjacent space factory. Were, yeah. yeah. And then it, it will shift, oh, and it moves to If You Don't Understand in 2019, which was at Neon Park. 
and then to the exhibition where I come to meet you, which is um, when I'm not there, which was at Mama last year. And then we'll be at the Art Gallery of New South Wales in May and June yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, so I guess thinking about the context of here, um, I was wondering if you wanted to talk about like briefly those projects, yeah. but also that relationship between dance and the specific intersection of it into contemporary art spaces or, or yeah. otherwise. Um, uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for hosting this talk. Um, and um, uh, I think, you know, there's a, there's a, a couple of things. I guess the, the reason why I chose this particular series of images and sorry they could seem to be cycling around quite fast if you go bonkers stop looking at them yes, um, but um uh, it's because I think um the reasons why I started making work the way I did was because I, I it was a sort of a, a question for me um how do I make work for myself to perform became a very particular interest and then when I was working with the interest with also working with other people, what those relationships became and what making work with others choreographic, choreographically was about what that those modes of communication might be rather than um, simply um, uh, what were the types of information that were important. So I think um, for me also the context of situating choreographic material and performing in different kinds of spaces was very important for me because I felt like it allowed people to make different kinds of connections, bring different kinds of information to the way that they apprehended what they were um, at, what, what they were looking at and attending to in different ways. And it allowed people to kind of um, make, uh, yeah, different sets of, of 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 you know um, possible ways of understanding that work um, by taking it out of the theatre and kind of uncoupling a couple of the um, different kinds of things like the relationship to music and the relationship to uh, basically a single point perspective and to certain sorts of experiences to do with duration and the the um, the sort of uh, the theatre of the theatre too. And I'm really interested in theatre too. So it's not about a sort of a value thing. It's just about a sh shifting, shifting things and being aware of what things are. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of that, like, I mean, the, the title behaviour mm -hmm. is, for me, pretty evocative. But yeah. then thinking, because I didn't see that work in yeah. 1995. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> but thinking about like later, so yeah. me coming back, coming to your work later yeah. as a visual artist. Yeah thinking about what choreographic material is and looking at your work and thinking about interpersonal relationships, rep repetitive gestures, iterative moments, also feminin femininity. Or yeah. I always think about um, there's an essay called Womanliness as Masquerade, like, the perform like a performance mm -hmm. of that, and wondered if you could speak to that relationship to with what you're calling choreographic material, which to a, like a dumb painter, um, what, 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 <laughs> what might that mean? I guess it's a way, often with um, with dance especially, there's a particular um, association with um, that emotionally or, or in terms of narrative that there's a, uh, some sort of direct uh, relationship with the material between mm -hmm. intention, um, experience, and uh, and uh, and the articulation of that in whatever way. And I guess I was very aware when I was making work when I was young that, uh, and still am, and you know it's just been a continuing um, interest that there were particular modes of looking at sort of choreographic material but there were modes of looking at dancers yeah and you know when I was you know making beginning to make work it was the 70s there was a lot of discussion about the gaze 
And I think something that was hugely important for me was, um, especially when I was making, or in all situations, it's like, how do I and how can I have an active gaze as a performer um, in relation to the situation that I'm performing in, which includes other performers, but also the audience. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, with the behaviour series, especially came out of um, a sort of a curiosity about how, if I was, because the very first behaviour was at Store 5, mm -hmm. um, which was an artist-run space and brand, which was quite small. And so the audience were in very close proximity to me um, and I to them and they to each other. And because I had people around, they were also looking at each other. So it wasn't only my behaviour that was being observed, it was each other's. But I was also interested in how close you could get to somebody yeah. without, also without making people feel um, obligated mm -hmm. and uh, implicated, although there is implication in all of those relationships but also not uncomfortable because it, you know, there were a lot of um, performance works at the time that I had seen, which were actively trying to make people feel uncomfortable and threatened and at risk. And sometimes they really were at risk too. Um, and I was kind of curious about how to make some nuances with those relationships. And then, you know, with the other um, iterate other parts of behavior which are all separate works they were this one that up now was at um, Anna Schwartz gallery and um, I was kind of it was a, it was a diff, I was working with a kind of slightly different set of circumstances that meant that I was I wanted to situate the audience slightly differently so that they, they were transverse mm -hmm. on either side, which means that although they were still looking at each other, there was kind of a slightly different thing going on and that my space was very restricted too. So it was much more like a stage, even though the, it was um, within a, a commercial art gallery. And being in a commercial art gallery is a very different situation from other situations. Yeah. And then um, the, uh, the 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 um, image with lots of people um, was behaviour seven, and that was about the relationship between transferring what had been solo material into something that happened with twenty people. And I was really interested in developing that work, how that information was transmitted. So the transmission of information between, you know, in, a, in developing a work between the performers is interesting for me as well as in relation to the audience. Well, that, I mean, that was one of the really interesting things for me to learn meeting you. And I guess one was like, I, you made me think about dress, like which I saw the redo, remake of. 20, 20 or so years later, yeah. and there were very specific rules of, on entering the gallery. Yeah. No phones, you have to stand here, blah, 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 which I thought was really interesting. So the documentation of our public was irrelevant. It was about the experience of the time. But then also I loved maybe it, talking a little bit about being John is a really interesting way of thinking about the solo for me. <laughs> um, and working with like an ensemble, the, the ensemble or the collective yeah I mean is that is that okay yeah sure <laughs> um so you know there's a, I, I kind of I'm interested when I was younger and I was starting to make work with other dancers and I was adding, asking them to replicate my, the movement I was doing I got really tired of and bored with that and also I thought it it didn't work for what I was trying to do. So then I tried to um, think about ways that... Um, uh, it's a bit Ben John right now, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm really um, trying to work out ways of passing information that was like all different ways of doing it. So Ben John came out of um, developing a, a work... Um, called Vian, 
um, which uh, was probably the first time I just I I had I was fiddling with something or other, and I wasn't I was fairly sure what I was trying to get at. Anyway, so I just videoed myself um, in the studio, and then realized that it, it did the things that I wanted it to do. And I asked. Um, people the five dancers at least one of who's here actually um Dianne if they would learn that work and kind of but I didn't want it I did in the anyway I did I was this it was kind of I tried to be as strict as possible but I, I always break my own rules um of, of me not actually teaching it to them mm. but and then to me it's like what is the thing what is the thing that is is important um is it the the actual shape of the movement is it the intention is it where your weight is is it is it the connection between things is it none of those things and I guess that just became more and more interesting for me in and how to build stuff yeah and it, well, I think as a viewer, because I think oh, that's what I am, yeah. I don't feel like I'm the main goer at any point. But what, are, what becomes so. interesting is how someone's own body, and it's because it's not mimicry, it's something else, embodies this Ben John character, which isn't a character either. No. Um, mode of movement yeah. um, is perhaps mode of yeah, mode of movement. Yeah, and I guess I'm interested in working with other people in my work, not because because of the relationship between their knowledge and mine, yeah. rather than, yeah. Yeah, and um, maybe, the, I mean, I'm, I, I haven't run these questions by you because you're making me think about different things. So when we, we first met, which was where we were going to go, kind of this way, um, I have described it in a past life as like kind of like dating a little bit, like that was felt like we were getting to know each other over food and there was no real origin of the beginning of the conversation there was just kind of like this dispersion of shared experience or something yeah and interest in various yeah. things yeah and especially in in writing and, and different things that That's we were right. reading and yeah yeah so we and we began the conversation began in kind of like literature hmm. and what what would a chapter be? Because we, were, you were trying to figure out or think about the representation of a history of work in a two-week duration, and how the audience could experience that, yeah. and how they would have a key in to it being like a survey, whilst also being a new work. Because yeah. you weren't interested in a hist history. Oh no, you're interested in history, but yeah. you weren't interested in how am I gonna explain that? I was interested in history, but I wasn't interested in, in a sort of didactic yeah. um replication of things. Um this was for when I'm not there, which the 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 commission at um for um it was commissioned by Mama and also the Archive of New South Wales was specifically about it was about making a new work, but its relationship to you know the body of work and I guess the chapter thing also came out of mm. my interest in R.H. Quatmain's work mm. who talks about chapters but they're not literary chapters they're to do with the way she organizes series of works and how they kind of relate to each, each other in different yeah. ways and how they might speak to each other so that it's also not necessarily mm. linear chronologically yeah. in terms of that that kind of structure so you know it's like you know with performances things happen through time and they sort of happen in some particular order but because of the way we apprehend them they don't necessarily happen through time they also loop back through memory and I guess my work has always looped back into earlier work as well it's mm -hmm. something that I've always been interested in and the whole reason why I started making work in gallery spaces in other kinds of spaces not was not because it was new or kind of like something that hadn't been done before but specifically because there was a historical context mm. um, which ran through you know um, avant-garde 20th century avant-garde dance mm -hmm. Um, through all sorts of different kinds of situations in which 
dance functions, um, not only theatrical dance, but also um, in, in very specifically in late 20th century um, discussions between visual artists and um, and choreographers in different parts of the world. Yeah, and maybe it's worth asking then, because oh, I wrote down those specific apparatuses I think you've referred to before, like jump jump cuts, like borrowing from film or stealing from film or yeah. thinking through that, yeah. uh, those other mediums yeah. or scripts that you've done with, was it Robin? Robin McKenzie. McKenzie. Yeah, so I've, I've always been interested in how choreographic practice and uh, sits in relation to other kinds of things like theatre, yeah. like um, different kinds of writing, both fiction writing and different genres of fiction writing, um, visual arts, different aspects of visual arts. And and I'm I'm it's not what I'm, I'm not interested in how those things meld together or how they translate from each other, but in fact I'm interested in the gaps between yeah. them. And they're different kinds of things that function differently in diff for different purposes. Mm -hmm. But there's something about utilizing bits of modes of thinking and, and ways of constructing things that can like push up yep. other possibilities, I guess, for both me and also I think, and it's why I also work and have asked to, you know, other people working in a number of different media, video, all kinds of different um, uh, visual practice, three-dimensional practice, um, yeah, design all sorts of things, you know, because it's as important as the particularities of a particular of a space. Yeah, like the usage of a space. Yeah, it's not just because something looks cool; it's yeah. because of what it is and how how it functions. I think, like when I my first conversation with you was when I called you because I was writing a review about design and plot, and I think I spoke I, very specifically with a friend at that time that I wanted to write about it because I I didn't understand it. <laughs> that um how would I write about dance it, I mean it felt like it was being presented in an art, contemporary art context I yeah. wasn't thinking about it as dance per se yeah. and then knowing that I could recognize forms in what I was seeing mm -hmm. that, that that those forms would also kind of disappear but then um this like the repetitions um, knots I, I remember thinking a lot about that there was these knots and even in um we out like last year it felt yeah. like there's lots of moments where things come together in a knot and sometimes that's in a repetition of an ensemble everyone working together but sometimes it's separate yeah there's also recognizable moments I think at one point I couldn't tell whether one of the dancers had really hurt their foot or whether it was part of the some instruction that I was yeah. not privy to yeah um but so and a resistance to what I call picturing but you call something else that I can't remember maybe it is picturing like the refusal of trying to make a picture with the body yeah but there still is a kind of a recognition yeah. so this space between abstraction yeah I guess what I'm getting to is like articulating this between mm -hmm. between things like because I'm interested in between images for, for yeah. example so but you're what is this between thing and its relationship to abstraction or not pictorializing or yeah I'm, I'm enormously interested in that yeah. especially in terms of kind of modes of performing so I guess when I am teaching and when I'm working um, in building a work with other people um I was yapping about this this morning in class, actually. I was talking about the how of doing things. So, you know, I think that in learning the technique of becoming a performer a, a, in primarily dance, um, you know, there's a relationship. There's always this thing about uh, the experiential and the the way that you are seen and I think you know just continuing my interest from when I was much younger about this gaze thing is like how do you how do you work with that to make that a very dynamic 
And for me, I'm interested in ambiguity, which I guess is not about relinquishing uh, responsibility for meaning, but it's much more to do with like keeping those, those relationships alive to in fact allow the possibility of engagement in a lot of very different ways for the audience. So it's like these sort of various modes of pattern recognition. So it's not only recognising very familiar forms that are, are fixed, but allowing that pattern recognition to function perhaps in finding things that maybe I don't know about to, mm -hmm. you know, because I think unless you can keep on finding things, you know, it, it's not so interesting for either me as a performer or for the audience for much anyone. Yeah. for anyone. Yeah. yeah. Because it becomes too script like or prescriptive. Well, you are just doing the, the this thing. thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Which and I think I think the last I'm gonna end on one last question because I think then we should open up questions. Is that cool? Um is I remember when during because this all began working on this was during a pandemic and during lockdown. And so whether rehearsals could occur or not, or whether anyone could even meet face to face. Yeah. A, By this you're talking about when I'm not there. When I'm not there. Yeah. yeah. So which was at Mama last year and Agnes, oh, I call it Agnes. Whoops, A G N S W in July. Um Mama and Agnes. Um, um but you and I actually we it was part of the phone conversation as well, but talking about the role of notebooks and then um not knowing if the dancers, performers could be together, um, them going on walks together, things like that. I just was like. Yeah. So, you know, I I started making this, yeah, during sort of uh, 2020 and, um, and 20, 2021 I started, I guess, mainly. Um, and um, uh, we couldn't meet together. So I. Um, I started, we had kind of, like I said, almost like a reading group mm -hmm. and um, we discussed various, these, I had this kind of series of texts that we were looking at, but it was mainly, it was not so much to do with um, uh, a sort of a didactic reading. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but um, <laughs> but um, it was more to do with how different people understood things and and how they communicated and what it was about those texts that they wanted to communicate to others. And because people couldn't. Um, could only work with uh, people, you know, in their 5K radius. Um, um, it was, um, they couldn't all walk with each other. And there was one person who lived over the other side of the city. So in the end, um, uh, people, we, we sent each other stuff in the post as well. And we obviously emailed and Zooms as well too. But I was interested in how, or in again, all these different modes of communication. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, so, and then once we could be in the same together, we could, no, it's fine. Um, it was, um, it was also, uh, we could go in the park together. Yeah. So we did stuff in the park. Um, but there's something about the relationship also, the importance with the walking with people, um, the relationship, you know, between physical activity and and <laughs> thinking. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> really important. Where do you want to go now? <laughs> uh, um and just what do you want to see in the show? Anyway, um, behavior part 11. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, part 11. yeah, exactly. Um, and so, um, uh, yeah, 
it was an important part of yeah of the, of, of, and it was really beneficial because it set up a, a different so by the time we actually got to working together there was a uh, there was already um some common discussion areas yeah to work with yeah that's interesting the idea of the common discussion yeah. areas because i think you know with something like when i'm not there it's it, there is this network of information and yep. that runs between it so i'm interested in different with different works it's it's it functions in a slightly different way design plot it function in a particular way and um uh but it was also about a common relationship of information and the, the work that i'm just working on at the moment that i've just begun it's 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 built in another way again yeah yeah um, I don't know where I'm going to go now. That dog is throwing me off. But should we open to questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, are there any? <laughs> well, look, perhaps let me just tell you a little bit. Um, firstly, um, Shelley, is a thank you so much. Like, and, and I mean, I should say thank you to Lala as well. Uh, a kind of photo bombing. But yeah, so totally. firstly, can we acknowledge our speaker? <laughs> and um, and look, there, there's, a, there's a particular way we're going to do something that, that's a little bit unorthodox and a little bit tricky. If you've got a question, June is going to check in the way. June is going to run around and she's going to stick a laptop in front of you so the people in Zoom land can hear the question. Okay. So if you can keep your questions really tight and succinct, that will help the people in Zoom land. So who's got a question? Yeah, please. Um, have you got that, Jen? <laughs> right in the middle, just for you, Jen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Janelle. Oh, maybe that's a good idea. People should be yeah. in June. And in fact, if you've got a question and you're not shy, come on over and line up next to June. Okay. Hi, uh, Shelley. My name's Janelle Evans. I'm a senior lecturer here. I was really uh, taken up with something you said quite early in your talk, which was about challenging single point perspective. I know that this is something that artists uh, for some uh, hundred years at least have been looking at. So um, I wondered if you could elaborate a little bit more on that, please. Um, I... Uh... I had a, an unusual um, education in terms of doing the thing that I do. I didn't go to ballet school and I didn't go to the VCA. I, my mother was a, a choreographer and a teacher and in contemporary dance, modern dance. And um, I went to university. Uh, I couldn't get into the VCA because I didn't do ballet. Um, and I ended up going, and also because I had a variety of interests and wasn't quite sure whether it was going to be visual art or or, or, or dance that I wanted to train in further after um, high school. So I went to Melbourne Uni and did an art history degree, um, an undergraduate one. And I got really interested in the relationship between um, uh, in, that, in Renaissance painting um, uh, and the whole kind of shift towards um, single point perspective as a way of basically controlling a narrative or or um, uh, fixing a narrative from a particular point of view and the relationship between that and um, what was then called medieval painting, which was, you know, in the terms of the value systems at the time was sort of like um, uh, less value or you know of, of it wasn't it wasn't in the developmental view of, of of you know art history was like oh yeah anyway whatever and um but there were multiple perspectives within one one um unified uh uh system and I was very interested in that and also the fact that how knowledge shifts because there was perspectival painting in Greek wall painting too and also in relation to other forms like um, uh, 
uh, in operas when they're everybody's on the stage together and it's got a particular name which I always forget. Musically, everybody is there in one, they're harmonic, but the people who are simultaneously on stage together are not aware of each other and they're talking about each other and blah, 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 blah. So I'm interested in these kind of slippages with how, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, please. Can you, if you could come to the end of the aisle, that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, hello, uh, I'm Zane. Nice to meet you. Um, I just had a question about your previous exhibition when I'm not here or there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was there um, and I did watch it. Um, the use of sound in that particular, um, I guess, exhibition and performance, Thank I'm you. Yeah. really interested in yeah. um, because I guess the use of the body was very silent. Um, I guess it was like making sounds in the space. Um, but then the actual um, sound that was made for that exhibition, I was just wondering um, uh, if you had any thought, like what are your... Yeah. yeah. So one of the things when I kind of, you know, was interested in decoupling dance from things was decoupling it from music um, because I was really sick of seeing work that relied very much on the music to create the effect of what was going on. Um, but I am really interested in music. So at a certain point, I started using music again. And one of the people that I've worked with kind of over a sort of 20 year period was, is this um, sound design, a sound composer and engineer and sound artist, um, Francois Tedhas. And I asked him and he's, Frank made, a, I think five different, worked with me on five or six different works. And I asked him to um, work with the, the scores that he'd made to, to make something else that was, because sometimes when we worked, we, 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 he on purpose made these incredibly kind of overly sort of these filmic scores that like built all this narrative that maybe corresponded with what was happening mm. the other thing and maybe didn't so then he he built this other school that kind of had all these different connections between the work so it, it kind of functioned historically um as also another kind of archive in some ways archival um stream um of work that has happened with my work and then it was very much, and also in terms of the way the sound design in the room um, was very much to do with the space. So, and with that particular space, so it's going to be built slightly differently for um, for Sydney. But yeah, I mean, just kind of, I'll just add another little bit to that question, which is not, it hasn't been asked, but anyway, but it's the, you know, as with all the, the, the performers I work with and all the different artists in working in different areas, it's about these relationships between mm -hmm. their practice and mine rather than um, through, through the, uh, you know, of, of trying to kind of um, make relationships with the things that I'm interested in working on. So, yeah. It's always a little bit, feels like a little bit bound. I hope it's okay for me to. Yeah. That we, we reach a limitation in what, how we're able to describe it because I'd go, oh, there's the echo of the path of the path of Kirsten Thompson's yeah. was on the ground, but yeah. it's not really an echo. And then the sound. And it's because it didn't yeah. function properly because it went through walls because it was right. from a, an the early previous, iteration yeah. of, of the layout of the space and had nothing to do mm. with the choreographic language. And then watching the, watching the performers, or yeah. the, the dancers and the sound and them, I don't know whether they're consciously resisting being in time but then sometimes it accidentally yeah matching yeah um is all there's all these like uh, deliberate gaps built in or something yeah, yeah. hi Shelley Sorry. thanks so much for your talk um I'm just wondering if there's a reason you didn't show video documentation uh of your work today um there was a bit of video documentation before when we first started that's right I 
am very careful now to make a real distinction between the performances themselves and the documentation. I think often one is elided, you know, there's an elision that happens between them and I think they're different things. And it's not about saying, and there's lots of different documentation. So as part of when I'm not there, um, Jackie Shelton, who has taken still photographs um, of my work, also has written. So with the design plot, part of her documentation, and that was also a pandemic thing, um, was in fact a conversation with all of us and working out a way of, of that being another iteration, but it was a written one. So the the running screen is that is that documentation as well so it's a way of it's also kind of resisting that the kind of thing that the video documentation is the work and that that is the the sole most important way of documenting a work too yeah that's the main reason but yeah there was one like <laughs> But the, the the point is, is that piece is impossible to, to document, document accurately. Yeah, and that's not kind of like saying it's like some woo woo thing. It's just like it is because it it happens over a long period of time. Fourteen days. Ten, 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 ten days, days here and fourteen days in Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, and six hours a day. Six or seven. Yeah, five. Uh, yeah, five six hours. hours. Yeah, so I can't remember. It's a, it's a it's it it exists for the duration of the opening of the of yeah. the building. Yeah. Because they function, they are, it only functions when, when they're together, the performance yeah. and the exhibition. Is, yeah. Yeah. We've got time for the very last question. And it's Lisa and Shelley. Hi. Are the two of you able to unpack what your relationship manifested in for when <laughs> I'm not there? I know. I know. It gets better. I'm curious about how your conversations and overlapping interests came into play or what they resulted in for this exhibition? <laughs> Just a little one. To yeah. Uh, can, can, I, can I start? Go. Yeah. All right. So I, I ask, I don't prove, you know, people use the word collaboration a lot as a way that people work with other people. And there's other people that I've worked with, like Helen and various other people here. And I really resist the word collaboration because it assumes a particular type of relationship. Mm. And I think those relationships are complex and and the, and they are particular to each one. And with this, with when I'm not there, I particularly asked Lisa and Colby not to collaborate on the work so, and not to produce anything that for the work, but to talk with me mm. about things mm. so I asked both Lisa and Colby Vexler to be um uh consultants yeah yeah didn't know that be a consultant. it's a bit I mean it's a very interesting because I have the same questions about collaboration yeah. because it sets up a very specific point of view from the outside yeah um and I people would often ask me what is it that you're doing with Shelley Shelley and I think that's why I described it as dating yeah briefly because it kind of was like I was getting to know you yeah and we were building a conversation in relationship to a very specific um set of circumstances yes um, but the information the the relationship and the conversations ended up having implications in a whole lot of different parts yeah. of the work and different yeah. aspects of the work rather than being an ask As for a particular yes. output. output. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lisa, Shelley, thank you so much for today. Shelley, just congratulations, congratulations on such a rich, rich um, career, career practice and decisions. Thank, thank you, thank so, you much so much for your, for your generosity and willingness, willingness to share, to share that, that with us. Such, such a great, great way to open up for 2023. Um, thank you, thank everybody, you everybody who came, and we will see you all back for Art Forum next Thursday, same time, same channel. Please, thank you again.